Within the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, sorcerers are assigned grades, from grade 4 all the way up to the coveted grade 1. Meant to reflect their aptitude for Jujutsu sorcery, one's grade reflects their cursed energy output, control, manipulation, and the potency of their cursed technique, which is 80% of a sorcerer's potential. A common misconception is that one's grade is all there is to strength, but that's cap. Of course, for sorcerers who mainly fight with cursed energy, being able to use it better does increase one's power, but as you'll soon find out, there are exceptions to that rule. Grade 4 is the lowest of the low, and experienced sorcerers with little to no control over their own cursed energy and usually underwhelming amounts of it. Grade 3 is the bulk standard, those who sit at the center of the board with little to no outstanding traits, your average sorcerer. Grade 2 is meant for those who are above average, sorcerers who are capable of handling situations and missions by themselves. While their power isn't overwhelming, it isn't anything to snuff at either. Grade 1 is meant for sorcerers who have achieved the peak of attainable strength, those who have put in the time and effort to climb up to the top of the verse. It is the highest status a sorcerer can hope to achieve through hard work and the natural progression of ranks alone. Ah, how could I forget? This special grade reserved for the anomalies within the Jujutsu world. Kenjaku, a special grade sorcerer himself, describes the status as the ability to single-handedly overthrow nations. That is to say, if one such sorcerer attempted such a thing, there would be no living soul, save for another special grade, that could stop them. Now before I start, I feel the need to introduce another ranking. You'll have to let me cook with this one. See, in the calling games, there are many participants who are over the level of grade 1, but aren't quite special grade either. It feels disingenuous to place them either too low or too high. Thus, for the sake of this video, I will introduce a new grade. Call it whatever you want, a light grade 1, semi-special grade, but to represent the tier above grade 1 and its relative obscurity, I will be calling it grade 0. Before I begin, I just want to thank everyone for all the support on the last video. I really wasn't expecting it to blow up as much as it did. If you like this type of content, you can subscribe or like, and I'll get the memo to go ahead and keep making this type of stuff. Anyway, on with the video. We'll start from the lowest grade and progressively make our way to the highest. Rin Amai. Wait, who is that again? Ah yeah, the textbook background character. A bit of a dull way to start, but whatever. A figure from Yuji's past. He's the type of culling game player who turned to a sorcerer after Kenjaku's ritual. The only sorcery we've seen from him is his curse technique, which has something to do with creating flan, as his name literally means sweet and that's what Hana seems to have been saved by. Still, being a lackey for Hanyu and Haba is not a good look, so that's an easy 4th grade. Now Remy, the awakened sorcerer Reggie used as bait, and the most punchable character in the culling games. Her best showing was managing to slightly injure Megumi in a way that hardly mattered, while her previous attempts had been avoided with relative ease. Unfortunately, begging for your life does not in fact put you up the scales, and being captured by non-soldier sorcerers is an even worse showing. So, fourth grade. Hagane Daido. Relax, I know what you're thinking, but remember this is about grade, not power. With his utter inability to use cursed energy or any form of sorcery, Daido should be grade 5 if even graded at all. That's simply how the grading system works, the same thing happened to Toji. If you're wondering what grade he's equivalent to in power though, he's showing a fighting and even heavily injuring cursed Noya, who's one of the strongest special grade curses, puts him at least grade 1 in terms of strength. Now we move on to the third grade, in my opinion, the worst grade to be, because if you're exceedingly bad, at least you're pathetically funny, but if you're just mediocre, that's just sad. That is the case with Hanyu and Haba, two nothing burger sorcerers. Because their kits are so similar, I'm just going to group them together. If you forgot, which I don't blame you, these were the newbie hunters with the aeroplane and helicopter curse techniques. Credit where credit is due, having a binding vow built into the technique shows some understanding of jujutsu. But if your reinforcement is so pathetic that a rock takes you out, you have to wonder what you're doing. Haba isn't much better. The point of the binding vow was to make his head the most durable part of his body, yet one punch from Yuji was still enough to take him out. The random grasshopper curse from Shibu literally did better than this. <sighs> Moving on, Chizuru Hari. Chizuru Hari. This guy. For context, he's Mr. My life is worth 5 points. Without ever giving a chance to use his curse technique, Megumi caved his skull and then cut his head open. 
but he did have 28 points and showed at least a decent proficiency in fighting. Thus, he's at least above the lowest of the low, placing him in third grade. Now we move on to the sorcerers that are up to snuff, the second grades. Charles Bernard is a bit of an odd guy, the type of manga obsessed otaku that you'd only find at conventions, but when it comes to actually fighting, he's not half bad. He manages to put up a decent-ish fight against Hikari, who we'll go over later, and his curse technique, G War Staff, is actually pretty good, letting him see a second into the future each time he draws blood from an opponent. To defend against Hikari's coarse cursed energy, his reinforcement must also not be half bad, so second grade feels like a good position. Now moving on, Angel or Hana Kurusu, one and the same. The angelic Megumi simp who fulfilled their lifelong role as a plot device before being thrown out of the plot by Gege. Their only showing is against Sukuna, specifically Mekuna, and while you might believe it's an impressive showing, you have to remember her technique, which is technique extinguishment, hard counters vessels by literally ripping them apart. After falling for a frankly obvious bait, she's instantly taken out of the fight. The ability to use a maximum output curse technique is impressive though, so I'm placing her in second grade. And now we finally begin to approach upon the ceiling of the verse, the first grades. Let's start with the ideal first grade sorcerer, the prodigy Hiromi Higuruma. A defense attorney dissatisfied with the state of the system, Higuruma participates in the culling games to exercise his own brand of justice. A genius, to say the least. Within two weeks of becoming a sorcerer, Higuruma already had enough proficiency to cast barrier techniques as complex as domain expansions, while having a massive understanding of his own technique and shikigami. In his fight with Sukuna and Shinjuku, he grew even further, showcasing a vast understanding of domain amplification and reverse curse technique, a brilliance rivaling even Satoru Gojo. If his life had not been cut short, who knew how far he could have gone? Reggie Star is an incarnated sorcerer from the past. When asked, Dripper Drown, he responded. <laughs> Having made a deal with Kenjaku, he returned in the Culling Games as a player, a savant when it comes to controlling and manipulating his own cursed energy, whether that be to burn his contracts or reinforce himself to the point of only suffering minor fractures to his heel bone and fibula after having a six-ton elephant dropped on him. A master at using his technique. Had Megumi, another first grade, not been able to drop him into a pool of water to disable it, it is very possible he would have won the fight. Iori Hazanoki is a sorcerer from the past who aligned himself with Registar. The bulk of his ability as a sorcerer comes from two areas. His proficiency with his cursed technique, Explosive Flesh, which allows him to detonate any part of his body, though he mostly uses it to rip out his own eyes or teeth and throw them towards his opponent before. His other proficiency is his mastery over reverse curse technique, which grants him the ability to regenerate lost body parts from all the, you know, a first grade through and through. Roku Jushi Mio can be described in one word, sumo. Yeah, that's it. Don't mistake his simplicity for weakness though. When you begin to look into him, you realize how powerful he actually is. First, he's able to contend with an awakened Maki over 1,000 bouts, and if you want to say she wasn't trying, we can see her sweating bullets when they're out of it. His simple domain is the most complex we've seen across the entire series, being the largest and having the ability to erase any and all binding vows inside. Finally, if you need more proof of his physical strength, he's capable of headbutting cursed Noria with enough force to draw blood, so decent damaged. All in all, he's looking like a first grade. Takako Uro is another incarnated sorcerer. Captain of the Sun, Moon, and Star Squad, a group of assassins that worked beneath the Fujiwara family. While I get she's an assassin, I don't think that's an excuse for her to be butt-ass naked all the time. Like, generally, she's made this video 10 times harder for me to edit. With the ability to control the sky, Ro can warp the fabric, like literally the fabric of the space around her, to contort and twist attacks away from herself or straight back towards the enemy. With her thin icebreaker, Ro can strike the sky itself to blast opponents away, balancing out her impeccable defense with a much needed offense. Finally, having mastered domain expansion, although it was never shown, we can assume this made her an even more proficient fighter. Ryu Ishigori is a sorcerer from 400 years ago, and well, he certainly had a glow up. Gege really cooked when he wrote down the idea of a Pompadour Cannon. 
The sorcerer with the highest cursed energy output in all of recorded history, Ryu is capable of discharging his cursed energy like a cannon, or then strikes that hold insurmountable power. He's also capable of funneling it into his reinforcement, boosting his durability to a greater extent. Much like Uro, he was capable of casting a domain expansion, though I don't really know how cursed energy release would translate into one. Always bet on Kinji Hikari, the luckiest sorcerer. Hikari's strength comes from one source, his curse technique and subsequent domain expansion. When his domain expansion is active, his curse technique allows him to, uh... I'm gonna be honest, I'm not reading all of that. I'm happy for you though, or sorry that happened. Basically, he gambles, and if he hits the jackpot, his curse energy replenishes itself instantly and infinitely for the next 4 minutes and 11 seconds. This automatically fuels his reverse curse technique, meaning for that period of time, Kinji Hikari is an immortal man. Combine this with his immense physical ability and rough cursed energy, which makes his attacks physically painful, and you've got one hell of a sorcerer. Hajime Kashima was the strongest of his era, the greatest rice farmer killer, and the waffled one. The highest rated calling games player, and unsurprisingly so. With his electrified cursed energy, Kashimo is capable of shocking straight through defenses, regardless of whether or not a guard is up. Furthermore, by building up charge on an opponent, Kashimo is capable of releasing a blast of lightning with sure hit without the need of a domain. A truly terrifying fighter. Finally, we reach it. The zenith. The peak. The pinnacle of Jujutsu sorcery. Culling game players who should hold the special grade. Hajime Kashimo. Wait, haven't I already with Mythic Beast Amber released? With the ability to manifest any and all phenomena that can be created through electricity, Kashimo goes from a terrifying fighter to a godlike fighter. Showing off a menagerie of abilities, from boosting his agility by quickening brain signals to vaporizing objects by sending out electromagnetic waves, Combine this with his pre-existing electricity trait and sure hit lightning blast, and there is almost no one who can stop him. But this is a one-time transformation that kills him. Thus, Kashimo stays in grade zero, as before he could overthrow a nation, he'd probably be dead. Drew Vlak Dwala is weird. I know special grades are meant to be anomalies, but this guy is just really odd. For starters, the Cullen game is actually his second reincarnation meaning he somehow gained a method to cheat death in the past. Next, normally I'd have put him in grade zero because of how Yuta, you know, off-screened him, while still being able to keep Kuro, Ryo, and Uro in check. However, it is stated he managed to conquer the entire Japanese archipelago by himself. So going by Kenjaku's definition, he would be special grade. It wouldn't be the first time Yuta snuck a special grade anyway. To be fair, with how complicated his domain was, being able to be constituted by the orbits of his Shikigami, I can't see him being that powerful. Yorozu is the Jogo of the Cullen games. Incredibly powerful in her own right, yet used as a jobber. Beating Hana out for the simple wards, she's utterly obsessed with Sukuna, coveting his solitude through her love. Capable of using the curse technique construction, Yorozu is capable of reconstructing anything she trains herself to do, save for special grade curse tools. Liquid metal, insect wings, and armor, Nothing is out of the question, even regular cursed tools. Her most powerful assets are her true spear, which erases anything it comes into contact with with infinite pressure, and her domain, threefold affliction, which takes that true spear and then automatically hits you with it. And that is every Cullen game player from top to bottom. Though I just had a thought, wouldn't it be funny if the Joe character was the strongest on this list? Fumihiko Takaba, the comedian, gains most of his strength through his curse technique. But don't take his regular jujutsu for granted. He has enough strength to send Hazanoki flying through several buildings with a simple kick, and curse energy so great it instantly put Reggie on guard. Takaba's true might shows through his curse technique, comedian, which allows him to manifest any scenario which he finds funny into reality. This allows him to conjure substances and objects from nothing, heal any wounds he has, and negate any and all damage. At his strongest, Takaba may force others into simulated scenarios where all damage done to them vanishes but all damage done to the opponent remains. Truly, he is the funniest one. Thank you so much for watching the entire video. I celebrated 200 subscribers in my last one and now you've pushed me to 800 so thank you so much. Anyway, if you have your own ideas on how characters should be graded, drop them in the comments. And if you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like.
Until then, I'll see you.